This is a 40-year-old man presenting with severe pain in the right mandible. The patient reported that there had been several abscesses in the past, treated with antibiotics. At inspection, a shallow occlusal composite restoration could be seen together with a mesial cavity. A buccal sinus tract was present. The tooth was tender to percussion and did not respond to thermal and electric pulp tests. A radiograph showed a large mesial caries lesion proximal to the mesial pulp horns and periradicular as well as interradicular radiolucencies. After rubber dam isolation and field disinfection, the mesial caries is accessed. The soft tissue excavated. and the mesial unsupported enamel removed. After thorough cleaning of the cavity, necrotic avascular tissue is observed through the exposed pulp horns. The pulp chamber roof is separated with ultrasonic tips and removed. Leukefaction necrosis appears in the pulp chamber. Irrigation with 1% sodium hypochlorite. The dentin covering the mesial orifices is prepared with ultrasounds and the orifices enlarged with gates gliden burrs. The fissure connecting the two mesial orifices appears now covered with a dentin protuberance. This could potentially hide the entrance to extra mesial canals and its removal is indicated. This procedure is known as throughing. The troughing procedure did not reveal accessory mesial canals. After working length determination and instrumentation, an intracanal medication with calcium hydroxide is placed. Two weeks later, the sinus tract had disappeared and the tooth is comfortable. The temporary IRM material is removed. The two distal canals merging together in the apical third are separated by an island of calcified tissue in the middle third. For improved Brightman, it is decided to remove this tissue and unify the distal canals. This is accomplished with a thin ultrasonic tip. The canals are finally obturated with a pre-mixed bioceramic material and single gutta percha cones. At the two-year follow-up, the tooth is comfortable with no traces of the previous sinus tract and the radiograph shows complete interradicular and periapical healing with a continuous lamina dura along the entire root perimeter 